Today on Judge Faith, the clues in this case are clear. He mentions later afterwards in email that he hadn't thought things through clearly before. I felt uncomfortable with the legality of the sale and that I would have to be buying a vehicle that wasn't rightfully mine. There's no dispute. He's the person you entered into the sure. contract with. This isn't a whodunit. And later, neither a borrower nor a lender be. She kept giving me the different excuses that I believe because we're good friends. If you're if so, you're friends with someone, you know what? Then invite them over, have dinner, go to the movies together. But you don't pay their bills. Then you're just being a fool. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Michael Lewis says he sold his RV as is, and now the defendant has buyer's regret. He's suing for the unpaid balance of his RV. Defendant Nicholas Lamb claims the plaintiff is shady and sold him the RV under false pretenses. He's countersuing for his deposit. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Lewis versus Lamb. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Michael Lewis, yes. you are suing the defendant, Nicholas Lamb, for $4,566, the remaining balance of an RV you say you sold to him that he didn't pay and other related fees. And Mr. Lamb, you are countersuing for $3,500, the amount you paid for the deposit for the RV you were purchasing from the plaintiff? That's correct. Okay, and you guys entered into a written contract, right? Yes. May I see a copy of that? Yes, Mr. Lamb provided this contract himself. Okay, so you drafted this document. That's right, yeah. Okay, so you entered into this contract, and tell me about the terms of the agreement. Uh, the terms of the agreement are pretty clear. Uh, it, it describes the vehicle very clearly. There's no question about that. It um, describes the terms of payment, and it also describes that the vehicle sold as is. Seller makes no warranties about the condition of the vehicle. Okay, so the contract, the, mm -hmm. the terms of the contract, there will be an initial deposit of $1,000 upon mm -hmm. signing of the agreement, mm -hmm. and then uh, the remaining $5,000 will be paid upon receipt and transfer of the title, correct? Correct. Okay, so while you were waiting for the title, mm -hmm. he paid another $2,500. So he paid $1,000, another $2,500. Mm -hmm. The total purchase price you have listed on the uh, contract was $6,000, right. and he actually took the RV, right? Yes, he took so, possession of the RV, and he took both copies of the keys at this Okay, point. he's paid you $3,500, mm -hmm. and he has possession of the RV. Now you're just waiting for the other $2,500 once you get the title in right. your hands. Right. Did you get the title? I did get the title. Okay. Why aren't you paying so, him the um, remainder $2,500? Uh, um, when I took the vehicle home, um, I noticed some extra things that were different about the vehicle than we'd originally discussed, like the backlights didn't work and the dashboard lights didn't work and things like that. And th this. But your contract said the right. vehicle is sold no, no, as no, is. No, so this is just an avenue towards a different, uh, towards a little bit more. Um, so because of this, I said, like, hey, this is a thing. And he's like, it's probably just a fuse. You need to pay me the rest of the money. It was kind of the way the dialogue started going. Previously, the dialogue had been really, you know, warm and comfortable and so I got really uncomfortable with the way that things started going and so I researched the legality of the contract itself. There was a bunch of things that were wrong that sort of got me worried about the, the You sale already in signed the contract, sir. You drafted yeah. this contract yourself. But I looked at this contract, no the like conditions like the legal the name on the contract is Michael Gaia, which is not Michael Lewis's legal name. Um, he's And and he's the person there's no dispute he's the person you entered into the sure. contract with this isn't a who done it. Yeah. You entered into a contract with him. Right. Okay. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> and um, the, the plaintiff is not the owner or title owner of the vehicle. And you knew that because yeah. it says in the contract once he gets the title, right. the title will be transferred to you and you'd pay $2,500 right. next. But it's not owned by him, right? He's That's, getting I, the title. That's a contingency agreement. Once he gets the title, he's going to transfer it to you. That's what you agreed to. Yeah, there's no bill of sale between the original owner and him and all there these was things a bill, that, there is that a bill the DMV of sale. required. There is a bill of sale. What is the reason, because you haven't given me one yet, the legitimate reason as to why you aren't paying him the remainder $2,500. I felt uncomfortable with the legality of the sale and that I would have to be buying a vehicle that wasn't rightfully mine. 
So I'm, I'm sorry if it made you uncomfortable in the end, but it's, it's you drafted the contract and you signed it and it is as is. I mean, is that what basically this boiled down to? There were problems with the RV and he, he expressed those problems to you? Well, he did express those problems. I mean, it, it, my sense actually was that Mr. Lamb was concerned about other things that he wasn't mentioning. Like I know that, that parking the RV in San Francisco was probably an issue for him that he hadn't thought about ahead of time. He mentions later afterwards in an email that he hadn't thought things through clearly before and that he had made mistakes. He says this in emails. Okay, well, that's too bad. Yeah. I mean, this is one of those things. I mean, it's, it's if, too if bad I sign a contract that's not legal, then... This is... A, I'm, I'm telling well, you, sir, right. do you want to debate the law with me? No. Okay, because I'm telling you, this is a legal and enforceable contract right. that you drafted and that the both of you entered into. And it says the vehicle is sold as is. Coming up, his panic put him in the poorhouse. He then sent me a FedEx package with the keys to the vehicle in it and instructions on how to get the vehicle. I talked to the, to the San Francisco Police Department and got legal counsel in this. I don't know who you were talking to. They were giving you wrong information. And later, the divide gets deeper between these two former BFFs. That's a lie. That's really, Raymond? Are she you said serious? Her parents wouldn't take her in. Her sister put her out. This is what we like, do? Let's be honest. So we, okay. Let's be here. Oh, let's so we throwing shade? I don't okay, have time Rippy, for this. Miss Rippy, ladies, we're not going to get anywhere if you guys keep talking to each other like this. Plaintiff Michael Lewis says he sold his RV as is, and now the defendant has buyer's regret. He's suing for the unpaid balance of his RV. Defendant Nicholas Lamb claims the plaintiff sold him the RV under false pretenses. He's countersuing for his deposit. If you're buying a vehicle as is, that means buyer beware. You take it or you leave it. If there's an issue with it, did you take it to a mechanic before you signed the I contract and gave him $3,500? No. Well, that's on you. I'm, but my concern is that it's not a legal sale through the DMV. And I'm telling you, it is a legal sale. Okay. He, he has the title. All it takes to buy a used car, a valid title, he transfers ownership to you, you pay him the money. There we go. Even if the title's from someone else that's not him? Sir, he yeah. got a valid title. Were you able to get the title to the vehicle? Yes, I have it okay. right here. There's no okay. issue with the title. Who has the RV now? I have the RV. How did you get the RV back? After this breach of contract emerged, and I realized that, that Mr. Lamb was going back on his intent to follow through with the purchase of the vehicle, and after I had made several attempts in email to try to come to some terms of agreement, um, he, was, he seemed to be completely unwilling. And so then I got legal counsel, and I had a letter sent to Mr. Lamb um, notifying him that I still needed the, the full payment, and that if he didn't provide that, I would take further action. I think sometime around the time he received that letter, he then sent me a FedEx package with the keys to the vehicle in it and instructions on how to get the vehicle. What do you mean by instructions? Well, there was a, there was a picture of the vehicle of its, of its location in San Francisco, which is an hour away from where I live. He wrote a letter declaring that he had no responsibility for the vehicle whatsoever. Um, he was giving me the keys back and telling me that it was in a 72-hour limited parking zone and that I needed to come pick it up. This was basically suggesting that. So you just wanted to send him on a scavenger hunt no, this is, to get the uh, RV. No, this is, I talked to the, to the San Francisco Police Department and got legal counsel. I don't know who you were talking to. They were giving you wrong information. You have a contract that you have entered into contingent upon the seller getting the title of the RV. Once he gets the title of the RV, the terms are set. This is very clear. This is one of the clearest contracts I've had in my court in a long time. <laughs> and so for you to force him to take the RV back when he's not willing to go back, you're having buyer's remorse for whatever reason, not having a grown-up man-to-man conversation with him, but FedExing him the keys and parking the RV in a random location and just saying, I'm washing my hands of this, I want my money back. This is back. what I was That's legally not how told it works. to do. It wasn't my, the vehicle wasn't mine. Let's see, the, let's see the picture. What, what picture did he send you? Uh, that's the picture he sent me, yeah. So it's just parked on a random street? Yep. Okay, and, and your countersuit is about what? Is my deposit that I paid? The $3,500 yeah. that you paid? Okay, you breached the contract. You don't get that back. <laughs> you breached the contract. And it's unfortunate because you gave the RV back. You have the RV back, right? I have the RV. Okay, and you have $3,500 that he paid you that you get to keep because you breached the contract. Right. That's mm -hmm. your loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, wh and what do you want from me? I would like the additional $2,500 that he, he agreed to pay on that, that terms of that contract and additional fees and costs for uh, damages and, and uh, legal 
items. Okay, if he does that, if you want him to pay you $2,500 more, then mm -hmm. you have to give the RV back to him. You have $3,500 as a result of this contract of sale that you get to keep, and you have an RV. You were selling it for $6,000, right? So now you get to sell that RV right. for another $6,000. You keep his $3,500. Okay. You're on top. Like You come okay. out on top in this that, situation that, because he possible. breached the contract. However, however, I, I, I'm not awarding you an, an additional $2,500 for the cost of the RV when you have it back, sir. However, Your, your Honor, um, I had this idea, too. When I, when, I, when I received the RV back, I listed on Craigslist again, selling it for the original price. The breach of this contract happened 18 days after the original signing of the contract, the, um, which was at the beginning of the summer. The season for purchasing RVs had changed, and I've had no one interested in buying it for that original price. But sir, it's a you, seasonal have, thing. you have $3,500 as a result mm -hmm. of his breach, and you also have the RV. Sell it again for $6,000, you make $9,500 instead of $6,000. Case is dismissed. <laughs> Plaintiff Rayvon Morris says she never expected her ex-best friend would take advantage of her kindness. She is suing for past due rent and costs of a vacation. Defendant Jamila Rippey says she paid back most of the money and the plaintiff is being impatient. Okay, Rayvon Morris, yes. you are suing the defendant Jamila Rippey for $1,782, eight months in past due rent and the cost for a vacation you say she promised to pay you back for and she failed to do so? That's correct. Okay, tell me what happened. Well, Your Honor, I met the defendant back in 2009 in college. We became good friends. What college? Uh, Western okay. University up north from Kalamazoo. Uh, we became good friends. Then in mid-February, the defendant came to me. Well, she was down on her luck. She was telling me her sister put her out. Mid-February of what year? 2013. And she moved in with another friend. They threatened to put her out. She kept coming to me again and again with sad stories. Mm. So, as a friend, I thought we was good friends. So, I told her, I offered her a place to stay. And I told her the stipulations would be that she pays me $150 every month. And I have to pay bills and show to she. Okay, and did you put that agreement in writing? Uh, no. How long did the defendant live with you? Eight months. I did not come to her and ask her to stay with her. Yes, you she, did. No, you asked you came me. me. Why would I Ray ask Von. you? Coming up, Judge Faith calls their contract into question. You neglected to put that she owed you over $1,200 in rent. That's what you want me to believe? Plaintiff Rayvon Morris says she never expected her ex-best friend would take advantage of her kindness. She is suing for past due rent and costs of a vacation. Defendant Jamila Rippey says she paid back most of the money and the plaintiff is being impatient. What do you have to say about that, ma'am? She's lying. I'm sorry? She's lying. <laughs> okay. She's lying. How? I mean, um, okay. Well, we didn't meet in college. We met at Western in 2009 and we were good friends and I did not come to her and ask her to stay with her. Yes, you she, did. No, you asked you came me. To me. Why would I Rayvon, ask you to come to me and really? put a burden on okay, me? Okay, really? Are you, how you Are you serious? Relevant? Relevant? For real? Uh, Miss anyway. Rippey, so tell me what happened. You did move in with the plaintiff, right? This is what happened. I uh, got kicked out of a friend, a friend of mine. I was staying with her, and I was telling Rayvon, like, I don't Why know what I'm Why did you get kicked do. out? It, it was a situation. It was another person staying there. We wasn't a part of the lease agreement, so we okay. both had to leave. Got it. I told her, well, this is a situation. I don't know if I'm going to have to go back up north to my parents' house or what's going on. She was all like, that's well, a lie. you can come she, stay with me. That's really, a lie. Rayvon? Are she you said serious? Her parents wouldn't take her in. Her sister put her out. This is what we like, do? Like, let's be honest. So we, oh, let's okay. Be here. Oh, let's so be we throwing honest. shade? Let's we throwing be shade? Be honest. This is how you act? Oh, you got them fake? So, how long did the defendant live with you? How many months? She stayed with me eight months. Did she ever pay you $150 in rent? She, yes, the very first month. She had the money because she was working at Taco Bell, and I helped the defendant also get another job at a group home. So, the first month you say she paid you rent. She's lying. Yes. Okay, so She's why are you suing for eight months' rent if you say she, she paid you rent? Because she ended up staying over a couple months until... I, it wasn't eight months. It was like October when you left. Ma'am, I'm asking you a question. How was it October Excuse when me, I left? My question to you is, how long she lived with you? You told me eight months. Well, I'm counting without the first month rent. I'm total, total time frame, how many months did the defendant live nine. with you? Okay, the first time I asked you, you told me eight. So now you say she lived with you nine months. Yeah, which right. one is it, Rayvon? Which one is of it? Of all, 
Hush Did she mouth. pay you, you rent? Mouth. We're talking. Let's tell the story. Stop it's, lying. We're Excuse talking. me, ladies, ladies. We're not going to get anywhere if you guys keep talking to each other like this. You said she paid you $150 the first month. Correct. That's the initial fee for her to move in because she couldn't move in without it. Okay. What about the second month? Then she... The second month she did not pay because she was saying that her job excuses after excuses. She kept saying her job cut her hours, went down to two days a and week. So you're saying there was no agreement rent. that she not pay rent but only pay for household No, it's no yeah, agreement. It's necessities agreement. and food. No. So let's In go October, to the second part of the lawsuit, which is you're suing her for five hundred and eighty two dollars for a vacation you said she didn't pay for. Correct. Tell me about that. Okay, yeah, the five hundred and eighty two was for the one fifty for the rent, and then the 302, I pay her plane fare to get to the cruise because she couldn't afford it. Wait, so this can't... $582 includes $150 in rent? Rent, and then I took her to work a couple times, so that also includes me gas money. Then the plane ticket, which what? is the 302. Gas money? I stay right up the street from my job. I walked. Okay, so you the total you're work. suing you for, for the... You took, Excuse took me, to ladies. a lot of time. Every time. So the total you're suing for for the vacation is three hundred and two dollars, correct? Right for the yes. Okay. Why would you buy a three hundred dollar plane ticket for someone who hasn't paid you rent in eight months? Because we're good friends, and she kept hmm. giving me the different excuses that I believe because we're good friends. If you're if so... you're friends with someone, you know what? Then invite them over, have dinner, go to the movies together. But you don't pay their bills. That's understandable. Okay. But... Then you're just being a fool. Yeah. yeah. Did the two of you ever enter into a written agreement? Yes, we did. About Your the Honor. money that was owed? Yes. yes. Okay. Do, I have do it. Do either Honor. of you have a copy? Yes, I do. I have a copy May of I see it, it please? as well. Okay. But I just need one. I, I'm going to let you know right now. Well, you can have her copy because my copy's damaged. Okay, see, this is not the I original. Do you have the original? No, I, mine is also, it was, she wrote it on a piece of paper and then she copied it. it let me like, see, let me see what you have. Well, like I said Because I see numbers... Like better. I said before, it's damaged. Like, uh, I don't know if you knew, but Michigan got flooded and my basement got flooded, so all my information is kind of messed up, okay. but it's in there. And also, the receipt that I gave her, $400 of the money, is in there, too. So how are you still suing me when I gave you $400? What is that? Okay. How are you suing me? That's it. That's all I have. My house was flooded. Hey, it's better than nothing. That's all I have. Okay, hold on. I almost have it You see how the here. number says 582 on the bottom? I just want to make sure I'm looking at the same document mm -hmm. for both of you. Okay. Yeah. At, least you were, at least you were able to salvage this. I mean, yeah, it was that's like literally my basement got flooded. Okay, and then this is what? That's the receipt from the $400 that I gave her for the, for the initial 582. So how do I still owe you money when I gave you $400? Okay, and so this agreement says... And you do you acknowledge receiving $400? Yes. You will pay... Rayvon, all of her money I owe her with my next two checks in the fall. Mm -hmm. That includes the trip and the bills and the total cost together, which includes back rent. Correct. And the total cost here is $582. And now, Judge Faith rules. You did sign this agreement, right? Yeah, we both signed it. And you read no. it before you signed it? Yes, but when we signed it, I did neglect to put the 150 because, once again, we are good friends, and she knew the amount no, that she had to pay. No, ma'am. You neglected to put that she owed you eight months in rent on an agreement where the agreement states this is the total amount that she owes you in totality. You neglected to put that she owed you over $1,200 in rent. That's what you want me to believe? Yeah, yes, me too. Okay, I mean, I'm... no, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that because here I have an agreement that's dated August thirteenth of two thousand thirteen, and it states unequivocally and clearly this is everything she owes you, which includes back rent, and the total cost is five hundred and eighty-two dollars. So I'm going to subtract from that the four hundred dollars. That's $182 in August of 2013 at the end of the eight-month period where you say she lived with you and you don't mention anything about her owing but eight months sudden, rent and only back rent you include is $150 of this total. I actually believe what she said about what she owes. And, 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 and in this case, it's in writing. So I don't even have to take her word for it. It's a written document. It's, that's the presumption when you sign a contract that both of you read it and understood it. So my judgment in this case is for you, but only in the amount of $182. Judgment for the plaintiff. Oh.